thank you all for coming. Um, you know, welcome. First things first, things first uh, if you're not on the email list to be notified of these meetings, uh, there's a piece of paper back there. You can put your name and your email address so you can be notified. Um, We've got a couple of speakers today. We've got uh, Commissioner Larry Rowley from the DPW. Um, we have Captain Picaro from the Police Department. Uh, Chief Williams from the Fire Department. And Janice Fitzgerald from the Council on Aging. Yep. But um, I'm going to just start by, you know, handing it over to the guests. This, this, uh, the meeting's here to be informative. And they're the ones who have who have any new information for you. So, uh, uh, Commissioner Rowley. Yeah, well, good evening, everyone. I don't have any statements, but I'll certainly answer any questions. Uh, could you guys? Speak into the uh, the microphone so the cable can pick it up. If you have any questions, just come up. We are. If there is any question, any concern, anything that you want to see fixed, we are your representation. That's why we. That's why we do this job, and that's why we have these meetings. I inform people who I see and interact with that I'm having these meetings, and. I have put, I, I invite people on Facebook, I share it on Facebook, uh, and I've put together an email, email list. Whenever somebody questions it, whenever somebody says, when do you have these meetings, or I'm not informed, I tell them to sign up for the email list. It's, I, I can't tell every, you know, every single person every single time this is what we're doing, unless I can do it with a blanket method like email. Um, I can notify you, I can give you a daily, you know, a daily reminder that we're having these meetings, but I cannot take you from your house and bring you to this meeting. So I'm, I'm actually very happy with the crowd we have. It's not the biggest crowd that I've seen, but in terms of involvement, you know, this is, I'm glad to see so many people out, especially with the weather. Do you want to? Yes. I don't believe it was, no. The Enterprise? Hi. I'm curious. I, I did see this. I saw it on Facebook. Um, I saw it in the email, but I look around the room curious. Are those things that everybody I uses? Don't have Facebook. And and I don't. And some people, other people, are walking away from. Unfortunately, walking away from Facebook. I haven't because, well, I just haven't, and I'm not going to. But so that helps me. Does everybody in the room have email? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know, maybe, and I'm trying to watch public access. I, sometimes it's just because, oops, I turn the channel, it comes across. So I'm not sure how, how other folks do. But I, I am getting those messages. So some of us are, but maybe well, if, to figure out. If you are not on the email list, by all means, uh, the notebook is right back there. And that is that is the most effective way that I have found to communicate quickly to everybody. Because I've covered the ward. I've walked the whole ward before, but it takes me most of a year. So I, I, can't, I can't run that up for every, every meeting. with Facebook um, I know I don't get the enterprise I get my information off the internet maybe you do an every door direct mailer for your ward people everybody gets mail it's, expensive. it's not it's not not if you work 
No, not if you work with the post office and follow their regulations. It's pretty inexpensive. Um, and, you know, you do it once a year. I don't know how many times we have these meetings. This is my first one. But, you know, tell people in the ward, you know, this is the way you find out about information. You know, here's my email. This is the link you find on the internet or on the website and just get the information out there and maybe more people will come in. I wasn't aware that it was uh, it was so cheap, but I'm, I'm going to have to look into it. I'd yeah. Be, well, the absolutely. Yeah. The, the whole the whole point is to inform as many people as yeah. possible. So and that's. Yep. I I do I do want to keep going with the the guests speakers we have because they have taken time out to uh oh. I don't know who you are what commissioner of what thank you I, I missed that I thought it was the pox but uh I I gotta admit that I'm really naive as far as the trash barrels I was the only one on my street still putting plastic bags out wondering what why do all my neighbors have new trash barrels what's what did I miss in here now I'm home after dock I believe in the dock so I'm kind of in the dock I don't know what's going on well I sent an email to you and you said everybody's getting new barrels and I said great well when I got the barrels I was yes all right there's little ones for recycling right wrong 96 gallons oh how many recycles am I gonna put in that thing that's like a month maybe two months worth of stuff my wife and I can fill up that little 36 gallon in two days with kitchen trash two trash bags that thing's full so I understand why they're doing it. They're trying to get revenue, obviously, because every town I drive through has two 96-gallon barrels. What happened to a major city like Brockton? I understand why they're doing it. To answer your question is a lot of the landfills and incinerators are shutting down, so they're forcing us, and, we, and we have to recycle more. Oh, I recycle everything, but that barrel's way too big. Which we increased by three gallons because the old ordinance was a 32. Now you're saying recycling. I'm talking. Tra you're talking trash, right? Recycling is the oh my god behemoth that'll never go out once a month maybe. Well, that's why we do it every other week now. Right. I so. You but uh, again, I, I didn't know anything about this until all my neighbors had new barrels. Now on your barrels, there was a, 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 yeah. a I plastic kept, I bag with one, some information right, I was on. I the last it. one on the street to get one. I actually. I, I emailed Jack to get, you know, where's my barrel? He said, everyone to re relax, relax. Okay. But it was like, I looked around in the morning, two weeks in a row, everybody's got brand new barrels. So I'm, obviously, yeah, took I, I wasn't contacted about this. Maybe something came in the mail, I missed it. Sheila Keene, I have a question for the, um, uh, you had mentioned in your last email about the uh, ward meeting that there was going to be uh, a change in the summer on the uh, uh, yard waste pickup to bi-weekly. Um, that might be a problem when it gets to be fall with the leaves. It's July, August, and September, and then we start picking it up again to October, and November, and December, weekly. So bi-weekly is only in the summer? Weekly is spring and fall. And, and the yard waste is not that much at that time. Thank you. Yeah, and, and regarding the, uh, the um, communication, um, I, don't have, um, I don't have Comcast, so I don't get the local station. So if I don't see it in the paper or in your uh, email, then I don't see it. The meetings are, uh, and actually because we're not at City Hall right now because of the City Hall elevator, all meetings are broadcast live on YouTube. So you don't have to have Comcast anymore. You can see it as it happens from YouTube and you can go back years and watch, watch as many, they're all saved on YouTube. Thanks to uh, thanks to you know Brockton Community Access, they they cover all the meetings, so you can see you know ward meetings, uh, some committee meetings, uh, and all of our council and finance committee meetings. Yep. Thank you. Any? Oh. I think this is. I think this is possible. Did I hear you just say the yard waste is only going to be picked up every other week? For the months of July, August, and September. Yes. Okay. So that means you're gonna you're gonna change your uh, recycle coach change. app. 
Yeah, we're going to have to change that. Yeah, because yeah. it, it Is says... Is it still showing we're picking it up? It sure does. Every week? Yeah, and I okay, was well, giving you kudos for that because I figured, well, that you're finally helping us. Now you're telling us, no, it's not right. Not changing. It's uh, not much yard waste goes out in July, August, and September. And it's a new app. You'd be surprised, and, and you know, yeah. You all have to realize that we never increased your, month, your, your quarterly payment of $70 a quarter. We tried Understood. to fit in the, the two new barrels. That was $3 million just for the barrels. So it was, there was no charge to the residents for this. So yes, we had to cut back a little bit here, a little bit there, to stay within the $280 for the year. So, so that's why we went recycle every other week. That and I the understand. Waste we had to cut back because it, it, was, it was a waste of money having these trucks right around the city, July, August, September, and hardly anyone's cutting their lawns in or there's no brush to put out or anything like that. And so that's why we picked those months. And the money, but the, the money, other uh, months, May and June, are going to be every week. Every week, yes. Okay. That Spread yeah, you, the, want to, you want to put it on your, your, it, it, your app. I think I mentioned, we did I mention it, we, the email? We tried to put it everywhere we could. Yeah. Um, well, you know what you got to tell them? You got to tell them, call, call Jack. I'll, I'll, talk to, I'll talk to everybody. I'll yeah, talk to them, yep. Coach. Give them my cell. I just wanted to add one thing, um, uh, Kim Williams, Ward 6. Um, so I've been going to city council meetings for quite some time. I don't get there as often as I'd like, the finance meetings as well. When you attend these things, you see what they're working on and what's coming. So I've pretty much known for about almost three years that this has been in the works and coming. So it was, um, if, if you go out and you, and you try to um, get informed, I guess, and I know it's hard for us, it's frustrating not getting the communication in time and everybody lives minute to minute now and they're busy, but if you do go out and try to get to one meeting a month or one meeting a quarter, you do catch up on what's there or if you catch it on YouTube or on cable. I mean, you do see some things. So. Yeah, thank you. Does anyone have any other questions for Commissioner Rowley? No? All right, thank, thank you. you for, uh, thank you for coming. Now I, I want to bring up uh, Chief Williams for an update from the fire department. All right. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here to tell you that at this point, the fire department is in very good shape. Um, we actually have 12 recruits in our fire academy right now. They're uh, scheduled to graduate a week from this Friday, which is May 4th. Um, which is going to boost our department from 180 to 192. Um, it's going to help for the summer season uh, when I have a lot of firefighters on vacation, things like that. Um, these new firefighters are going to make a big difference. Uh, drops our average age down, which protects the city a little bit better. Um, so we're in good shape uh, overall. Uh, I was wondering if anyone might have any questions. I, I live on Armiston Street, and we had the fire at the end. Um, that ranch type house burnt down. Um, could you t do you know if it was started by accident or if it was set? Do you I believe they it was dis determined that that was electrical. It was uh, okay. And what's going to happen to that house? It all depends on the owner, on uh, the owner's insurance company. Oh, okay. Um, at the time I of the fire, I I was told that the owner was in a facility. For right. a medical issue. And it's owned by a trust, and now it's just sectioned off. But um. once the investigation is complete, a lot of times that situation gets handed over to the insurance company. Okay, but it was it was a an accidental fire. It was. Okay. We believe so. Yes, you. you're welcome. Nobody wants to ride in a fire truck. This is your chance to ask. <laughs> All right, well, thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you all for having me. Thank you. All right. 
Now, I, I know, I, I, don't, I don't think anyone here is, is, is ready, to, ready to get into this kind of service yet. I think you've all got a couple more years left, but I want to bring up uh, Janice Fitzgerald from the Council on Aging. Well, good evening, everybody. How are you all? Good. I just have to, um, I have to t say two things as I was listening to everyone talking. First of all, being the director at the Council on Aging, I realize how difficult it is for people to accept change. I am probably the biggest offender out of e anyone, and my husband is as well. We are a family of four adults, and we have trash like you read about. So when I got our trash barrels the first time, I said, there's no way. There's absolutely no way this is going to work. This is the honest truth. When I put my trash out each week, we put two white trash bags in that little barrel, and I have room for one or two more. Recycle, we recycle everything. If it's, if it's recyclable, we throw it in a bin, it goes out, and it's perfect. So I understand everyone's frustrations. You have to give it a try. Believe me, it works. It really does work. And then the second thing, now I forget what I was going to say because I'm a senior, but it will come to me anyway. But anyway, I'm Janice Fitzgerald. I'm the director of the Council on Aging. I've been the uh, director there since 2011. Um, and I truly feel that you know we all have messages in life that kind of set us up to where we're going to be in later years. And for many years, I had to take care of my mom and dad as they aged and their health failed. And, you know, they didn't have a big income and um, just everything snowballed. And suddenly I find myself working at the Council on Aging and I feel it's where I need to be because it's my mission. It's my staff's mission to make sure that we help everyone in the city of Brockton, 60 and older, with services, get them involved socially, whatever we need to do, we do it. So um, I see some familiar faces here, um, some of our members, some of my volunteers. My volunteers are awesome. I've got 70 dedicated, hardworking volunteers. I have a staff of two and a half, and we have over 16,000 elders in Brockton. So, Councillor, what's wrong with that picture? But. Um, you know, we do our best and, and we give it our all every single day. And if you haven't been down there, please come down, take a tour, look around, um, and get involved. It's a great, great fun place. So, Councillor, thank you for having me. Um, and I know there's no questions other than where do I get my hair cut, but, you know, that's for another time. But, you know, thank you very much, and I really appreciate all you do for me and the, and the seniors in Brockton. So, thank you. I go, I go to the Council on Aging for all the, all the events and everything. I can't wait to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I want to bring up Captain Picaro now from the Police Department, for an update from the Police Department. Hey, good evening. I'm Mark Picaro. I'm a captain with the Boston Police Department. I've been up for 17 years with the department. Patrol division commander. And basically, what that means is I oversee the department's three patrol divisions. In addition to that, I'm also one of the public information officers, so the media calls about something. I try to uh, answer their questions. And I also receive the, I don't know if anyone's ever used it before, but the C click fix complaints. If you go on the city website, there's an app, some sort of a function called C click fix if you have an issue or a complaint regarding city departments, you can lodge that complaint online and it, it comes right to us. If it regards traffic or parking related issues, I get them and then I, I try and handle them. I'll take any questions if anyone has anything. What do you got, sir? <coughs> stop enforcing noise ordinances. I, I, when I was growing up, if you had a loud car, you'd worry the registry cops are going to pull you over. They yeah. go by my house, not one or two, like every other car going by has got no muffler or a modified muffler. Yeah. I'm not even talking about the motorcycles, the pickup trucks. It's just constant. I could sit out there, like every other one. It's just, it's, I, I'm like this, are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, uh, it's like, there's no law enforcement. There's no, 
it's lawless. Anything goes. Speeding and, and noise. Yeah, I get it. I, um, I'm sure you hear it. Yeah, I, I, I go to different meetings, and one of the big things is, you know, drug issues or traffic-related issues. It's a huge issue. Um, you know, unfortunately, we, have, we only have so many cruises on the road, and you've heard it all before, but it is the absolute truth. I mean, I, I, I would assure you that if that car went by a cruiser, action right. would be taken. That's what I was wondering. Do they go yeah. after these guys? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I it's certainly against the law. My back, I can't even grill on my grill. I can't even hear my phone, my yeah. radio. Yeah, loud noise coming from a motor vehicle is against state law, so that's, yeah. you know. Like I said, if I was a cop, I'd be pulling these guys over left and right. I know yeah. you have better things to do. No, it's not that we have better things. We're just not there probably right. at that point in time when the loud it's, car. It's, I mean, I can hear them a mile away. They're still going. Yeah. They're sitting on North Cary. They're sitting on my head, sit in front of my house. And you're like, wow. Right. Revenue would increase. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I don't have any All right, thank you. Anybody else? Steve Lally, probably could have asked Jack this question at home, but um, uh, the, the kids, you know, with the, the cars and they're, uh, this, they're, they're racing those uh, Honda Civics and they're setting off the C-Click, not, not the C-Click fix, the shot spotter. Uh, shot spotter. So they're, they're doing it on purpose. So they're, okay. they're revving their engines, making that thing go pop. You guys think it's a, a gunshot. Right. And it's not. So... That they're, you know, they're teasing you in a way, but, you know, I think the fines ought to be increased or, you know, doubled, you know, whatever you need to do. But yeah, have you heard that before? You know, no, this is the first I've heard of it. I don't oh. know if other officers are aware of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is, uh, cause but, that, you know, there was a local business. I don't want to say which one right now, but right, yeah. You know, they were calling and and it's like, you know, hey, <laughs> the the police call and say, hey, we're coming down right now. There's there's a gunfire right outside. Right. And it was a car. So. Yeah, that's Just interesting. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'll pass it along. Yeah. You know, I, I was yeah. unaware of that. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? That's it. All right. <laughs> Guess that's a good thing, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Aren't, aren't we lucky that that was exactly yeah. <laughs> good area? Yeah, I'll oh, take yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. All right then. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Tom. Well, I I reserved the place until eight thirty. I I don't know what you guys want to do. You want to have a party or something? Pizza. Pizza. I should have should have I should have gotten it. Um. If you have any if you have any questions for me or anything else, I'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, I think that it would be uh, you know better suited if you know if we all sort of milled around. So I guess that's that's that for now. But thank you for coming out. I, I appreciate it. Uh, again, my father's sitting right next to the email list. Fill out your your name and your email address if you haven't already. Uh, the goal is to reach as many people as possible. If, if you know somebody who, who you'd like or would like to come to the meetings, tell them to email me. All right? But thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it.